Hello everybody, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how we built a six foot cherry bookcase for a client. This bookcase is two feet wide and is made with a combination of solid cherry and cherry plywood. We cut all of the molding with a router and it's a relatively simple project that was a lot of fun to build. This is a project that can be done with a single sheet of 4x8 cherry plywood and so the first thing we did was to rip down that sheet into the components for the sides and the shelves. I want to point something out here. I have the blade raised very high above the surface of the wood and the reason I do that is because when the arc of the blade comes down the angle of attack that the carbide teeth make with the wood uh, provides for the cleanest possible cut and that's important to us when we're cutting with veneers and plywoods uh, but there's a safety issue there so you need to saw on your table saw the way that makes you feel the safest. And a little note on the type of plywood that we're using. This is a furniture grade plywood. It's not typically something you can find in a big box store. This is uh, something that came from our hardwood dealer and it's called a combination ply. Uh, underneath the layer of cherry, which is found on either outer face, there is a layer of MDF, and then the very center core is actually uh, veneer core. And this gives with the smoothest, flattest possible surface for plywood. And it's probably a little bit more difficult to detect that this is in fact plywood in a finished piece. And the reason for that is because glancing at this product from a distance, it appears very flat. You are unable to see any imperfections or voids that might be in the core because they don't get transmitted all the way up through the MDF. So it gives a very flat, uniform looking surface. So once we've got the pieces cut to uh, width on the table saw, we're just going to take them over to the chop saw. And here I am going to uh, cut them to the length that I need. And I've got a stop on the edge of my, uh, my miter saw station here so I can ensure that they're all the exact same size. Another thing I'd like to point out is when cutting anything on the chop saw, really, if you make a very light scoring cut first before you pass the blade all the way through the surface, then you're a lot less likely to get any chip outs happening or any pieces of wood flaking off at the edge and sticking up. It really makes for a much cleaner cut. And you can also help that process out by letting the blade come to a complete stop before you move the wood. And it looks like the photobomber there has graduated from photobombing to some sort of new new dance move. I think she must have learned that on the internet. What I've done here is I've put the two sides of the bookcase body together and I have marked the exact center location of those two sides. And this is going to help me with a layout because I'm going to make the shelves on the inside adjustable. And I'm basically going to space the, the adjustment pins uh, upward and downward uh, the exact same amount so it's symmetrical uh, from the center point location. And I'm also marking what is the front and the back of each of these shelf sides. This layout makes sure that my pens are symmetrical on both the left and the right hand side. And the next step is to go ahead and drill and put those holes in for the adjustable pins. And this is a shelf pin drilling layout jig. Uh, I bought this one from Rockler. Uh, they're also available on Amazon. I'll put a link to this in the description if anybody's interested. It is a very handy tool. It allows you to have perfectly even spaced pins. And this is the drill bit that you'll need to get to go with the kit. And uh, it basically has a little collar there. It's spring loaded so it will put the holes uh, of the pins or the pin holes at exactly the right depth. And the best way to do this is once you get the very first pinhole in, doesn't really matter which one, um, they have little locking pins that you'll put in. So I'll put this locking pin in and now I know the jig won't slide to the left or to the right as I drill the remainder of the holes. That will help to make sure that my alignment stays perfect as we go down the row. And from there that's it. We just drill all the holes on either side all the way to the very end. I wanted to mention that we do offer a comprehensive set of 3D plans for this project and there is a link to those in the description. Then once we've reached the end of our jig, we're going to take the locking pins out, we'll slide the jig all the way down to the last hole, line it up just right and we'll put the locking pin uh, back into these holes. And that way we can just keep going down the row and our spacing stays the same. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters 
And everybody who supports our channel by either buying plants from us or uh, buying the items that they need through our affiliate links that are found in the descriptions as well. Without uh, everyone's help, this channel wouldn't be possible. So thank you all very much. And if you like our videos, please hit the subscribe button down below and click the bell to get notifications for our future videos that come out. Now we'll go ahead and process some of the four quarter cherry stock that I have. This is uh, going to go for the fronts of the shelves, um, the front sides of the bookcase, and then the trim on the upper and lower portions of the bookcase. Uh, I'm gonna kinda cut it all to rough width here, and then I will give it to my daughter over at the jointer, and she will joint it down on one side, and from there we'll carry it over to the table saw, and she can rip everything to the correct width. And some of these wider ones are actually going to be for the top. At the top of this bookcase, I'm going to have a solid cherry piece and that we're going to put a bullnose edge on all the way around. So we're going to have to rip up some boards for that and then glue them up uh, together to make that solid top. And so even though the top of these won't be seen because the top of the bookshelf is six feet in the air, uh, Maya will go ahead and put these together in the way that looks most pleasing before we do our glue up. We typically like to apply glue to both sides of the joint and make sure that we have adequate squeeze out so that we know uh, the joint is fully bonded together and there will be no glue starved areas. And we'll go back to the joiner, finish up the rest of these uh, thinner pieces, and take them to the table saw after that. We always use the jointer first to make sure that we get a perfectly flat and straight edge. And then when we carry it over to the table saw, we know that ripping it is going to give us a perfectly parallel surface to that first edge that was jointed at the joiner. Now some of these smaller, narrower boards are a little bit scary to deal with, so sometimes it's good to have a, a push block that can actually be have the blade cut into it a little bit. Uh, this gives you complete control to push things uh, right up and over the blade if necessary. With those finished, we will turn our attention back to the two sides of the bookcase, and I want to put a dado on, uh, on, on the back side of these because I'm going to put a, a piece of quarter-inch plywood in. I want it to be recessed a little bit and that's going to provide the back of the bookshelf itself. I just have my dado stack in the uh, table saw there and the only thing that I'm using are the outer and inner blades so it's exactly a quarter of an inch wide and that happens to be the exact thickness of the piece of plywood that I'm going to put. So with everything cut it is time to do a little bit of assembly here and I'm just going to use glue and screws both to put the carcass together. Now you might be able to notice that the top of the bookcase here as well as the bottom are actually shorter uh, then the sides by a quarter of an inch and that's going to allow the plywood to go over that dado and all the way uh, encompass go over the top of the bottom and go over the top of the uh, top part of the bookcase so I don't have to dado those parts out. We typically like to put everything together in place get it lined up perfectly uh, we can even start to wipe off a little bit of the excess glue uh, we'll get it we'll get it prepped up to exactly what we want and then we will go ahead and drill the holes and put the screws in and it really doesn't make any difference that i'm going to have screws showing here uh, because in the finished product they will not show i'm going to have trim that goes all the way around the top and bottom part of this bookcase And I'm just going to go ahead and rip the quarter inch piece of plywood that's going to go for the back.
Now we have to cross cut it to length, but since I, I can't really do this on my table saw, I have a fence, uh, circular saw fence edge guide. This one's made by Bora, which is pretty handy. I'll just take my measurement and then I will use that as an edge, edge guide and I'll uh, cut it off with my circular saw. I'm not really concerned about the edges of that plywood fraying at all because that's going to be completely hidden and buried inside of the body of the bookcase itself. And for this I'm going to use some glue and some staples, some pneumatic staples to hold it together. This is Kyle, my daughter Maya's boyfriend. He usually comes and helps us out when we've got bigger projects that we need to move or heavy pieces of wood we've got to get down and that helps us out quite a bit. I do like these staples. These staples actually will hold into thin plywood a whole lot nicer uh, than a finished nail will. And I think we get a much better looking product when we can have the back piece of plywood hid in that recess as well. And so here, here Kyle's earning his keep here today. He gets to move this heavy bookcase around a little bit for us. We needed to move a little bit quickly with that glue up so that we could get this piece turned around and clean out all of the excess squeeze out. Well, we got to this point and I realized I forgot to cut the pieces of wood that I'm going to need for the molding. The trim that's going to go around the top and the baseboard type trim that's going to go around the bottom of the bookshelf. So I'm just cutting that here real quick. Okay, I lied. My daughter Maya is cutting it. You can usually tell it's Maya, not me, because I rarely paint my fingernails that color. You'll notice Maya's not really taking the time to uh, score the top of the wood before she cuts it all the way through because at this point we're just getting a rough cut so that we can get this over to the router table and get the trim cut because it's all going to be cut off anyway once we fit it to the actual bookcase. So we have let the top of this cure overnight and we'll go ahead and take it out of, out of the clamps and cut it down to the correct size. I need to get this piece just a little bit narrower so I can get it through my jointer uh, and get it down to a little bit thinner than this and clean up those glue lines. If you happen to have a planer, this is a quick and easy way to get all of those surfaces down to one flush equal level. If not, you can certainly sand it. After that, we'll take it back over to the jointer and joint both sides down. From there we need to cut it down to exact length and it has to be perfectly square. The best tool in the shop for that is a crosscut sled. If you need to make one, I've got a video that shows you just how it's done. And I can put a link to that in the description. Alrighty, now we will cut some trim at the router table. I have a cove bit installed and this is the shape, the inside cove, that I'm going to put around the top edge of the bookcase. This is going to go against the bookcase and up against the top at the same time. The top's going to overhang. And you'll see how that's going to go in just a minute here. You don't need a router table for this. You can just put that in your router itself and cut it. It just makes things a little bit easier in a table. And here's the top itself. I am going to put a bullnose edge all the way around the top, which is what I, essentially a, a round over using a 3 8 inch radius roundover bit on the upper and lower half of this. And the cove molding that we just cut, I actually cut that on a little bit bigger piece than I needed because it's safer and easier to do it that way. And then from there I'll take that over to my table saw and I'll actually cut the cove piece off that I want. So the flakes that you see coming off of my push block are epoxy. As my push block gets worn down, we basically put a layer of epoxy on the bottom to get it back to the thickness it was before. And this way my push stick can essentially last forever. And there are our three pieces of cove molding that are going to go around the top. Now I'm going to cut the baseboard type molding that's going to go around the base of the cabinet. And this is just a standard raised panel router bit uh, used for like raised panel doors for cabinet doors. 
A lot of router bits are very versatile. You can do a whole lot with them. You just have to use your imagination a little bit and you can uh, turn them into all kinds of shapes and use them for all kinds of different purposes. I've taken the individual shelves here and I need to go ahead and attach the solid uh, three quarter inch cherry trim uh, to the front of them. And I'm going to use a biscuit joiner for that. You certainly don't have to have a biscuit joiner. You could use some dowels here. You could probably get away with uh, just some pin nails and glue. It's, uh, there's not going to be a lot of stress or load on this particular joint. So for gluing on the biscuits, if you don't have a lot of uh, experience with biscuits, biscuits are made of beech wood and it has been highly compressed. So it goes through a mechanical pressing system once they're cut into shape and they compress them to be much smaller than they actually would normally be. And when you put glue on the biscuits, you need to get glue all the way around the biscuit and especially on the end. And the water in the glue will actually cause the beach to expand and it will swell in and fill that joint very tight, which will kind of help to create a mechanical bond there as well as just as, as the chemical bond, bond that the glue does. And it makes for a much stronger joint. Now biscuits certainly aren't as strong as say a mortise and tenon or even a floating tenon system like the Festool, but it's a quick and simple way to do that. And you can see they're also not quite as good because you do need to make sure that you get the alignment, the vertical alignment done correctly as you're doing the clamp up. It's possible that the elevations of these two surfaces might be shifted a little when you first put them together. So I like to put lots of clamps and make sure they're nice and flush as I do the assembly. And I guess you can get a close-up here of the effectiveness of seeing how we clean out the glue in the corners with a straw. Uh, just cut the straw down at like about a 45 degree angle and you can just scrape the glue right out of those inside corners. Here I'm cutting the last piece of trim. This is going to make for the arch that goes at the very top of the bookcase. And before I can figure out the exact length of that arch, I need to put the uh, the two side pieces of trim on first. And I want to get these very exact. I like to line it up flush on one side and then use my tool to scratch a an edge, which gives me just an absolute perfect alignment. I'd rather do this than measure because I feel it gives me a more accurate result. And here I'm just going to use a little bit of a straight edge, a short straight edge, and just test it and make sure that it is perfect, uh, both at the bottom and at the top. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to use a little trick here and to get the exact length that I need for the board that goes in between these two. I'm going to put these two pieces together and slide them all the way to one end and make sure they're perfectly aligned at the edge. Then I'm going to put the board that's going to go between them actually in place and I'm going to mark the bottom of this for where I need to cut it off at. So basically for the distances I've counted for the two sides and the middle, but by doing it this way, I can actually put my scratch marks on this center board. And now you can see my mark there, it's very faint, but uh, that's the exact size that I need. So I'll take that over to the chop saw and I'll get that chopped down exactly right. And I'm going to do a test fit here to make sure that I like the fit and before we proceed to do anything else with it. Once I'm satisfied with that, then I can go ahead and cut my arch. And all I'm doing for that is just kind of marking about an inch in from each edge. I want it to be straight for a little bit before the curve begins. And then I've marked uh, a line in the dead center. And I've marked the high point of the arch, which is the highest point that I want it to go up. And I've got just a real thin 16th inch piece of wood. And I'm bending that in place and then tracing around that. And that's going to be the, uh, the curve. So Maya's going to cut this out for us on the bandsaw. The trick here is to just go really slow. Take your time um, and don't cut the line. Basically cut real close to the line, but don't cut the line itself. And then we'll take it over to the sander. You can use a belt sander, an oscillating spindle sander, or whatever you have, and then take your time and sand it right down to the line. 
Uh, it takes a little bit longer to do it than uh, maybe some people would like, but doing it this way always gives you a perfect finish, a perfect surface. We can fine tune that curve and smooth it up with the random orbit sander. Now that the solid cherry trim board has dried on all of the shelves, it's time to cut them to length. Uh, I oftentimes will put them in and put them in a little long. This uh, saves for me accidentally making a mistake and, and shifting it too far to one side or the other. And it's really no problem. We'll just take it over to the crosscut sled in a few minutes and I will cut those off. Uh, but first we're going to go ahead and assemble the outer frame that's going to go on the front of the bookcase. And I'm going to use a biscuit joint here as well. It's also important to go ahead and mark the locations of all these. That way I know the front sides and I know what goes with what so it'll all go back together nicely when we're done. And this is not a very complicated glue up, but it is, it is a big glue up because uh, it's about a six foot long frame. So if you can get a hand whenever you do something bigger like this, it always makes the job go a little bit easier. So after that's clamped together with some parallel clamps, I don't really even need to wait and let the glue dry. We can go ahead and pick that up, set this up on top of the bookcase itself, and see how it looks. And if it looks good, we're going to go ahead and start marking the locations to put the biscuits in here. I'm going to actually biscuit joint this whole thing down into the bookcase, and that's just going to make for a real nice and strong assembly. So it's nice to have an assembly table, but I guess if I'm working with something too tall, I've got to have one of my kids get up on top of the assembly table to help. I want to show you another thing about these biscuits that's kind of nice. The biscuits, sometimes you'll when you cut them, you'll cut them a little offset to the left or to the right, and you actually have some play. You can see the biscuit can be practically buried, and it can still shift a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and that's kind of convenient and gives you a little bit of leeway there when you're doing a big assembly. Uh, it'll allow you to tap your, uh, your joints together to the left or to the right to get them perfect. And it's important to remember that there's no such thing as too much glue. Once we get all those glued up and ready and the face frame is glued as well, we can go ahead and do the assembly. Leave it out, out 
Since these boards are fairly narrow that we're clamping on, uh, it's important to get clamping pressure probably every 8 to 12 inches. And uh, if need be, that way we get kind of uniform pressure. These clamps aren't squeezed down tight by any means. They're just barely put in place to uh, give a good snug hold. Now I need to turn my attention to the bottom part of this bookcase since nobody wants to reach in and reach down low below the front trim piece to put in their their books or whatever we want to make the very bottom shelf to be flush with the top of this trim so we have ripped some pieces of plywood some scrap plywood here to get us up to the right level and I've got a piece of the the cherry shelf itself and I'm just doing a quick test to make sure that this is exactly the right height uh, as the front once I'm satisfied with that, then we're going to glue in the trim pieces all the way around and just put a couple of pin nails in to hold them until they dry. So if you can notice there's a piece of paper on the left there. That paper is going underneath my support board. The, uh, the cherry shelf on that side would have ended up being about uh, six thousandths of an inch shy and paper is about three thousandths of an inch thick. So I folded that in half, put that in place, and I brought that side up to exactly flush. Now we can go ahead and apply glue all the way around here and install our shelf. This is one that you're going to want to make sure you cut very carefully. Uh, make sure it's square, make sure your bookcase is square and there's no problems because you're going to probably have to ruin this piece to take it back out if you make an error at this point. And I think that looks a lot better than having to reach down below that surface. And now we're going to move our attention to the trim. I'll do the baseboard trim first. And I'm just going to kind of put it in place and make a little mental note to myself of which way I want to cut the bevels on these boards. And I have made them all a little bit long, if you recall, uh, so that I could get them over there to the router table and just get the, uh, the, the molding pattern cut. And I'll go ahead and start cutting them and fitting them one at a time. I typically start with two edges and that's it. Uh, just to, to meet at one of the front corners and we'll fit everything from that corner. So these are the two edges and you can see as I wiggle it back and forth I can find a location where it's, a, where it's perfect. Once I've identified that location then I'll come over here and mark the other side for length. And for this one, I am going to make a real thin cut a little bit away from the line where I know the line goes, and then I'll kind of creep up on it until I have it exact. Now I can cut the other side piece to match up to that. And then when those are held in place, we can mark the location on the back where we're going to cut them square and terminate the cuts. For all of these, we're going to use glue and pin nails to hold them together. The glue is really going to do the bonding. And also, don't forget to make sure that we put glue on the bevel itself, that where that's going to meet. That's going to be important. Uh, but the glue is going to do the bonding, and the pin nails are really just going to hold it in place until that glue has cured. A pin nail is a very thin gauge nail that has no head on it. So once that's driven in, it's actually just about impossible to see it. Uh, there is a very tiny pinhole, and that's really easy to fill before we put the final finish on. I also like to put nails directly from trim board to trim board in this fashion in order to lock them together. And that's how the trim looks once that's all put together and the glue's been cleaned off. I'm turning my attention back to the front of the bookcase itself. The trim that went on the front on both sides 
I'm going to put a little chamfer on both sides of this trim and I'm going to stop at a certain distance before I reach the top and before I reach the bottom. I think this will give it just a little bit more architectural detail and a little more appeal uh, to the character of the bookcase itself. Now we'll take a minute to trim the extra length of solid front trim off of the edge of the bookshelves themselves. This is very easy to do on the crosscut sled. I'll first cut one side, and once that blade comes to a stop, we will put the shelf on the other side, run the shelf up next to the blade, and trim that side off. With that done, I've taken a measurement from the front to the back of the bookcase, making sure I get behind the front pieces of trim that are on the body of the bookcase itself and I now know the depth so I've got to cut these bookshelves down so that they fit within that space. And once I finish there I'm going to go back over to my assembly table and put a chamfer on the top and bottom of the shelf itself. If you happen to have an assembly table or something with a bench vise it's very easy to hold this board while you're doing that. Okay, now we've got the very last uh, part of the assembly of the bookcase itself is the top and the trim that goes on the top. So I'm just going to kind of get an idea of where exactly I want this top to be positioned. We're going to get it equally distant from both sides and it looks good. And we're going to go ahead and glue this and pin nail it in place as well. And since we have a very massive glue joint here, it really covers the entire width and size of this cherry a uh, solid board that goes on top, I don't really have to worry about expansion and contraction. The glue up is essentially going to act like a laminate, uh, the same as if we were just gluing up sheets of plywood. And now we're going to put the cove molding trim around the top and we're going to use the exact same procedure that we did for the bottom. I basically start with two pieces cut and that gives me one corner and we will take all of our measurements and build out from this first starting corner. And I essentially take my time and I creep up on the cut and I try to split that pencil line right in half. And in case you were wondering, that is exactly the right amount of glue. And I don't even have to worry about cleanup. This is the new advanced Type On 2000. Uh, when I'm done gluing it, the glue is aware of that fact and all of the excess simply falls to the ground and sweeps itself into the trash. Okay, so we have put some shelf pins in here, and we're just going to do a little test fit on our shelves and make sure they look good. Okay. 
All right, and so that completes the building portion of this project. All we have left to do is to sand and finish it. And judging by those wagging tails, it looks like the shop dogs are pleased with the project. For nearly all of the trim or any of the uneven portions, I really like this 3M flexible sandpaper and these foam sanding blocks. I'll put a link to those in the description. They're pretty popular and they're really handy. They make a tough job really easy to sand. I would just let you use your imagination for how the rest of it was sanded because it's uh, kind of boring to watch. All right, now it's time to finish the project and I actually have two sprayers, uh, which I usually use for larger projects and both sprayers are not working. So we had to resort to cans. Normally I would just uh, order another sprayer, but this is a project that needed to be delivered. So we needed to go ahead and finish it. This ended up taking three cans and I like to use Deft, D-E-F-T, lacquer. Uh, we use lacquer finish for most of our projects. Uh, it gives really good solid uh, uh, hard protection coat and it looks really pretty. It brings out the grain in the wood and we're usually pretty pleased with it. For the bookcase we gave it four coats total. We sprayed on a coat and then the second coat and then we sanded it lightly with some 400 grit paper between those two coats and then we sprayed on the last two coats after that. Each of the shelves got basically the same treatment. Whenever you're spraying lacquer, I kind of want to point out a good technique to use. And it's what Maya is doing here. When we spray, we like to start the spray on the outside of the piece and then walk the spray over the piece at a uniform rate and finish by going off the other edge. And if you do this, then you'll ensure that you get a perfectly even coverage. Once the finish was fully cured, we took 2000 grit sandpaper and went over all the surfaces with that and that made the whole project glass smooth. And that wraps up this project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.